We now welcome UFC featherweight Andre Feely. Andre, thank you for the time, sir. Thank you. Um, how do I look? Do I look cool? You, you look great. Thank you. Uh, we will take the first set of questions from Gabriel Gonzalez with Cape Side Press. Hey, what's up, Andre? How are you doing? Doing well. How are you, brother? Doing good, man. Coming off a nice win in June. What's the mood going into this latest matchup? Just staying sharp. And um, I feel like I've been on a good little run. Had a couple decisions not go my way, but I, you know, overall I'm happy with where I've been going in my career. And I just kind of doubled down on the stuff I was doing before and started introducing some new stuff. Uh, got to work with my buddy Gary Tonin a little bit. It was one of the best, probably the best grappler in the world, the best MMA grappler in the world, I would say for sure. And um, incredible, incredible grappler. So I got to work with him a little bit and just kept improving on the things that, that I think make me the best. And and uh, and rock and rolling, dude. I'm like excited for this fight. I'm like, I'm I'm antsy almost. Like I just can't wait to fight. So I could see that. I wanted to ask you after your last fight, you talked a bit about how you felt like you know as you've grown, just you know over the years, you know you felt your body changing. You're growing into your frame a little bit more and things like that. You're feeling stronger. Have you felt like your style has naturally changed? Feeling that physical change inside yourself? Um, yeah, I don't know if, I think the biggest change is growing into my frame. I just, I feel stronger. I'm a better athlete, stuff like that. As far as the, the my style of fighting changing, yeah, it's, it's, it's a natural progression. It just kind of, it just kind of happens as I, I learn new tricks and, you know, there's stuff that I learned when I was 12 years old wrestling that, you know, that I still remember and there's stuff that I learned last week that I, that I, that I still use. So I'm always learning. I'm always growing. I'm always evolving. And, you know, whatever the situation is, every fight's different. So whatever the situation is, um, I have, I have, uh, I have things, I have things for that situation. I have, uh, yeah. Yeah. My, my style progresses naturally. Yeah. And I, I've, I've been doing this for a long time. So I have a lot of, I got a lot of tricks. On a personal level, you also talked about how you're looking to buy a house. Where are we at with that, man? Yeah, I'm a homeowner now, so that's cool. Congratulations. It's been expensive. California, uh, California real estate's no joke, but got it done, got it all furnished, and um, yeah, it's starting to feel like home. It's a big project buying a house and getting it how you want it and getting it all furnished. But yeah, it's dope. I got a little mini ramp built, and uh, I got so I can skate at my own house now and. Got a pool for my dog to jump around and swim in with me, and uh, life is good. Congratulations. Uh, two, two last ones. When you're up against a guy like Bryce Mitchell, you know he's got that sick ground game. Obviously, you want to be prepared for that, but how do you make sure you balance it so you're not neglecting, you know, making sure your striking is sharp as you also probably take extra time to work your grappling in camp? I don't know, that's that's the thing about MMA is it's, it's a balancing act. You got to be juggling um, a bunch of different skills all at the same time. So, you know, I think I'm a better striker than him. I also think I'm a better grappler than him. Uh, he's got some real tricky stuff from that cross body. Uh, got real real tricky twister uh, arm triangle stuff, and um, he's a great grappler. But I actually think that I'm better. I think I'm better all around everywhere. And you know, I just kept doing what I've been doing and, and making a point to get better everywhere. And then I also, like I said, I brought in guys to work with. I, I, you know, I had my coaches who are some of the best coaches in the sport really study my opponent's game. And I feel, uh, man, I, I feel so prepared. I just, just ready to fight. I'm all the hard work is done and preparation was perfect. And my performance is going to be perfect as well. Looking forward to it. Good luck. Thank you. We're not seeing questions. We will take our next set of questions from Danny Segura with MMA Junkie. Andre, um, I just want to pick up on, on something you said. You said that you brought in uh, Gary Tonin. Was it specific for uh, this bout or did, were you guys working uh, prior? We have worked before. Uh, I went to New York last time and then, um, you know, it's both things. Like we worked before and, and I consider him a friend and he's a good guy and an, obviously an amazing grappler. But, uh, I brought him in to work some specific stuff for this fight. Uh, the way that he breaks down uh, 
the, the grappling game is I've never seen anything like it, man. Like I, honestly, he's, I've never seen anyone. Obviously, he's uh, – I think Flow Grappling has him ranked as the number one grappler in the world right now. So, obviously, he's an incredible grappler, but also his mind for grappling, not just his own grappling, but for breaking down other people's grappling and for teaching grappling and just just everything, man. He's, he's on another level. So, having him was a huge asset. Um, I feel extremely prepared and – yeah, I'm thankful. Thankful to have uh, friends like Gary. Thankful to, thankful to have uh, um, my team, uh, Team Alpha Male, Danny Castillo, Fabio Prado, Chris Oldsworth, um, you know, all, all the people who have helped me with my grappling over the years. So, Yeah, for sure. No doubt Gary's uh, one of the best. Plus, he's got some uh, solid MMA experience now. Um, so w was it one of those things where they called you up with Bryce Mitchell and immediately you're like, all right, I got to hit up Gary for, for this bout? Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess so. I, they, they hit me up for Bryce and I immediately said, yeah, cause I like, I love that matchup. He's got a lot of, uh, a hype around him right now and you know, he deserves it. He's 13 and 0. So yeah, I mean, I was excited right away when they gave me the name and then, you know, just made sense to bring out Conan. He's the best rapper in the world and he, he's, you know, he's a buddy of mine. He's also a featherweight, and mm -hmm. he's got it. one of the best jiu-jitsu minds in the world. Just made sense, you know. And I just bought a house, so I got a guest room for him to crash in, and nice. Just made sense, you know. It wasn't like a, it wasn't um, like anything. It wasn't like a crazy like moment where I was like, I gotta get him out here. It was just like, you know, why wouldn't I do that, man? He's yeah, he's the fucking best. Yeah, for sure. And uh, Bryce, I believe he's ranked number 15. You think a victory here will put you back in the rank rankings? I mean, you're on a nice run in your recent performances. I don't know. I, it's, yeah, I, I, it's hard to talk about. I don't want to sound douchey, but, like, I just don't care about the rankings anymore. Mm -hmm. They're made up. Um, they're arbitrary. Like, other sports, the rankings go off of how well a sport uh, – how well a team is doing that season in the sport, or they go off numbers or stats in – fighting the rankings are basically people's opinions um people's people who don't fight but watch fighting for a living their opinions um but yeah the only real rank that matters is champ you know and then i guess whoever gets to fight the champ so the champ and number one the only ones that really matter um everything else is just kind of made up and you know, i i think i was ranked 15 briefly but I've fought the best guys in the world. I beat the number 11 guy in the world on two weeks notice. I, I don't know. I just, it, it doesn't mean what it used to mean to me. The only thing that matters to me now is winning fights, getting paid, making my people proud, you know, winning a fight, getting paid, making my people proud. That's, that's the checklist for me, man. The numbers and whatever other shit is all icing on the cake, I guess. I'm not, not that worried about it, man. Yeah, for sure. I don't think you can be. I don't think you can be too worried about it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like worrying about being ranked is like worrying about your fight of the night bonus. You know, like it's it's it'd be cool, but that's not that's not your entire job. The job is to go win, make your money, and um, anything after that is is icing on the cake. Yeah, no doubt. And we spoke uh, years ago. I don't know if you remember, but you told me you sort of wanted to dive in, into the pomade business whatever happened with that oh yeah um, a more natural look nowadays yeah i don't use pomade that much. i still like pomade like shout out to laywright those guys are rad i still use laywright pomade and um yeah i'm just 30 now and i don't do my hair <laughs> uh, <laughs> nah man uh it just it just i just went different directions like i have a bunch of other stuff i've been working on you know and uh i just didn't end up doing the pomade there's certain there's certain um like industries that are hard to get into. Like it'd be, it's hard to do a pomade if you're not a barber, yeah. you know? Cause it's like, why would a barber use your pomade if you're not, a, if you've never cut hair, you know? Like, even though I, I my friends own barber shops and I, I, I like the culture and stuff. It's the same thing with tattoo stuff. Like if you're not an artist and why would an artist, you know, it's not different than like someone showing up who's never fought or who's never really been involved in the sport and trying to sell fighter stuff. It's like, you know, you can't really, it's hard. It's hard to get into an industry yeah. that you're not actually part of. So I didn't end up doing pomade, but um, like I said, some of my best friends own barbershops and are barbers and 
I, I love the, the culture of barbershops and um, it's not off the table, but it's not what I'm focused on right now. Right now I'm just focused on my win Saturday night. Yeah, for sure. And you're fighting on a card where Anderson Silva will be having his retirement bout, obviously a historic fighter. So uh, I wanted to ask you if you could describe Anderson Silva in one word, what would it be? Legendary. I've been watching that dude fight since I was in high school and getting to be on a card with him is huge, man. It's, it's a pretty crazy, you know, I try not to overthink things. I try not to like focus on really anything but the fight. You know, I'm just take it as it comes. Keep, keep, keep in mind that the fight is the only thing that matters. But that's one of the things that kind of makes you stop and, and look and be like, damn, like I'm co-main on Anderson Silva's last fight his retirement fight, I get to be the co-main event. And like, you know, and, and Uriah Hall is a buddy of mine and uh, you know, he's a good guy and he gets the opportunity to fight a legend like that. And it's just, it's just cool, man. It's cool to see, it's cool to see things like that. And it's cool to be a part of it. And it kind of makes you stop and step back and realize like what a blessing all this is to get to do what you love and watch guys that were your heroes in high school and, and be on the same card as them. And to be a part of this is, is something special, man. Yeah, I'm super thankful. Yeah, and lastly, uh, favorite Anderson Silva memory or moment? Um, maybe the snap kick. Maybe the snap kick against Vitor. Maybe um, there's a bunch of there's a bunch of things. Um, maybe that first fight with Chris Lieben because I had yeah. never seen. I had watched him fight before. I had watched him fight in Pride. I watched, uh, I think, Ryo Chonin, uh, scissor heel hook him. You know, I knew he was good, but I'd seen him. I'd seen him be, be sub submitted before. I'd seen him um, do do a well in Pride, but then he hit the UFC and just man, I, I watched him fight. Like just watching him fight and watching his precision and watching his creativity was a huge inspiration to me. So um, hard to pinpoint one moment, but I, I guess if I had to say one moment, it would just be that feeling of being, you know at the end of high school or middle high school and watching him come out and being excited and having that feeling of like, man, like this is kind of our Michael Jordan. This is like our guy for, you know, for me, that was, that was to sit around with your friends and watch that and be excited. And like, you know, it was, it was something I look forward to when I was young and it's something I look forward to now uh, being on the same card as him. So it's cool. Yeah. I'm looking forward to your fight. Best of luck this Thank weekend. You, Thank you. We will take our next set of questions from Cote Cruz with the Four to Win podcast. How's it going, sir? Great, great. Thank you for your time. Um, in your last two fights, uh, they were very competitive and ended in a decision, which it kind of always involves a little bit of controversy, right? I imagine that this time you will not try and leave it in the hands of the judges. How do you feel this uh, little streak of decisions one for you, one for the other guy. How do you feel this will affect your approach in this uh, particular fight on Saturday? It doesn't affect my approach. Uh, my approach isn't really dictated by the judges. Obviously, I want the finish. No one, no one wants, no one wants to go to decision. No one wants a split decision. Whether it's a, you know, like nobody wants that. But I'm fighting the best guys in the world, and you know, sometimes it happens. Um, my the way I fight is dictated by my opponents. You know what what I think it takes to get the win and to to beat my opponent. And you know I don't really factor in the judges. I, don't, I try not to factor in anything else but my opponent and myself and getting my hand raised. Man, like you can't you can't think about that stuff. For me, I don't I don't like to think about that type of stuff. Uh, I'm not going to let anything pull me out of my game. You know, I think that the judges got it wrong against Jordan. I think they got it wrong against Sadiq. It, that's old. That's old. I don't care. It's not going to affect this fight. Um, you know, like, and when I say the judges got it wrong against Jordan, I mean it was a union. I don't think they should have been a split. Let me clarify that. I think I beat. Uh, I think that a split is fair against Sadiq. But I think I won. Um, the decision against Jordan, I think, was obviously a unanimous decision. I think I controlled almost every moment of that fight. And um, yeah, I just, I don't know, man. I try not to put too much stock in it. Like those, the decisions have bothered me before and I've just kind of tried to move past it now because you got to control the controllables, you know? You can't control shit that's out of your, 
that's that's it's not yours to control and you'll drive yourself crazy trying to so it's not for me you know yeah i completely understand well you entered the ufc at a very young age like seven years ago and you have faced a lot of great fighters you faced the michael johnson's the dennis bermudas you fought a uh, holloway and a uh, big etc um how do you think this experience will help you how how this collides into into the last fight yeah i think um you know it's like just like you need mat time to get good at things that you're drilling and practicing you know you need cage time to get good at winning fights and, and being in that moment and i've had a lot of i've had a lot more than my opponent you know not, not to say that he's not comfortable in there you know i'm sure he will be but i think that i think the experience is is a, a good weapon to have you know and i definitely have it in this i've I've had my highest highs and I've had my lowest lows and I've gone right back to having the highest highs again. And it's all been in that cage for everybody to see. And, you know, Saturday won't be any different. I'm just going to get my hand raised and you, know, you guys will see me win again. It'll be more decisive. It won't be a decision. It won't be this. It won't be that. There won't be any controversy, but like I said, I'm just focusing on, focusing on me and not my past opponents, not, not, not my opponent's, past opponents, not my decisions, not his finishes, not my finishes, not not anything else but me, myself and I just winning a fight, you know? So that, that's that been a huge change for me is just this singular focus of I don't really care about anything else but myself. I see. Uh, your opponent, Bryce Mitchell, has become known for his great ground game. Uh, you and your last fights have uh, been more of a striker lately. Um, do you have a, any visions for the fight and keeping it standing, or are you trying to make a point in this fight and try to beat him at his own, at his own game? Wherever the fight goes, I'll be ready. Um, I, I got something for every position, and uh, I'm going to dictate the entire time. I'm going to do whatever I want, honestly. And it's, it's a feel thing. You know, I'm go, I go off feel. Um, I don't like to set real strict game plans. You know, there's a few things I need to watch out for. He's got a really good uh, back take cross body attack. He's, he's got some, some real good tricks, but you know, I'm going to do whatever I want. I'm going to, I'm going to beat him everywhere and I'm confident and I'm, I'm ready and the preparation is done. So it's just time to have some fun. Thank you so much for your time, Andre. Best of luck in your fight. I Thank appreciate you. it. No problem. Appreciate it. Um, we will take our last set of questions from Pablo Santa Maria with Noti MMA Ecuador. Hi, Andre. Uh, as an Ecuadorian, I want to ask you, like, uh, for how much time have you been friend of Cheeto? Is this Cheeto Vera himself? No. <laughs> uh, I have been friends with Cheeto for, I don't know, five years, four years, maybe five years. Okay, that's awesome. So, uh, talking about the fight, uh, do you feel excited of taking the, the O of an undefeated fighter uh, that has a lot of hype? The, this, are you sure this isn't Cheeto? <laughs> uh, yeah, taking, yeah, beating an undefeated guy is exciting. Like I said, I, I hate to sound like a broken record. I feel like maybe I sound, people are going to get the wrong idea of me, like, I don't think I'm like, I'm not some cocky douchebag dude who like thinks he's got all the answers or like, I hope I'm not at least, but I just I focus on myself and I don't care about anything else but myself. I don't care about his record or his wins or his, you know, like I know what he's going to try to do. I know what he's good at. I know what he's done in the past. I know all that. And, you know, I'm ready for it and I'm focused on myself, man. I, I just, I just stopped trying to focus or control or, Really have any say about things that aren't in my control man I'm just focus on myself okay i get it so uh you said that you don't want to uh leave the fight to the judges so what's your prediction for the fight i'm gonna win i'm gonna win it could be knockout i could knock him out could knock him out early could knock him out once he gets tired could knock him out after he gets discouraged i could also sub him man i could sub him i could uh i could catch him in something You know, it's going to be a finish. It could be anywhere. Um, and that's what makes fighting so exciting. You know, he's a grappler, but I wouldn't be surprised if he comes out and 
chop some leg kicks or throw some big overhands. Like that's the beautiful thing about fighting, you know, nobody really knows. So I'm excited. I know what I'm, I know what I'm going to do, but I will uh, let you guys tune in and check it out. Okay. I get, and if you get the W, uh, you have an opponent on your mind or you want to call someone out? No, I'm just focused on my opponent Saturday. No one else is on my mind. Yeah. He, my opponent's barely on my mind. I'm just focused on myself, man. Just focused on having fun and getting in a fight and winning. Like it's a beautiful thing, man. It's very simple. It's um, it's always been simple, and um, sometimes things outside complicate it. But when you remember that it's simple, it's fun again. Okay, so uh, would you like to send a message to your Ecuadorian fans that are rooting for you because of your friendship with Chito? Yeah, man. Viva Ecuador, bro. I love that. <laughs> I love Ecuador. I love, I love Cheeto. He's wild, man. He's a, he's a crazy dude. Uh, I got a lot of love for him. And uh, I love the passion that the Ecuadorian fans have. So uh, adopt me. I'm, I'm one of yours now. I love you guys. Um, fans all over the world, I appreciate it. And uh, I, I love all my fans and even people who are rooting against me because they support this sport and that's how we make our living. So I appreciate all the fans, but Ecuadorian fans are especially crazy and especially passionate. So, uh, yeah, much love to them. Thank you very much for your time, Andre, and good luck on your fight. Thank you. Holy fuck, they love Cheeto, Ecuador. He's a fucking president out there. <laughs> thank you so much, Andre. That is all the questions we had for you, sir. You are good to go. Cool, thank you. Uh, I have another one, a, three, four, a different thing, or is this it?